All right, so our objective today is to understand and apply Uh, let's see, I've got one, two, two theorems uh, for similar triangles. And this comes out of um, Lesson 7-5. Oh, by the way, coming up next week, woohoo! haven't had them in a while, Constructions! Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't want to hear the word hate with constructions from crying out loud. You're going to get a project on constructions. <laughs> Luckily, this guy has a name. So here's the funny thing. This is the third time SAS has showed up in a theorem. We had SAS postulate to prove two triangles are congruent, similarity. We had SAS inequality theorem, and now we have SAS similarity theorem. The order that those letters are written are meaningful. SAS stands for? Side, angle, side. Okay. Side, angle, side, and the angle has to be between the two sides, or is called included. Okay. So if an angle of one triangle is congruent to an angle of another triangle and the sides including those angles, that's a different way of them saying it, including those angles are, well, let me try that again, are in proportion, then the triangles are similar. So if I have one angle of a triangle is congruent to one, this, another angle and another triangle, and then the two sides that flank those angles have the same exact proportion, then I can conclude that the triangles are similar. All right? So let's kind of investigate that with a picture. So here's triangle ABC. Here's triangle DEF. And we're going to give you one piece of information, the if, right here. Now, what I'm not going to give you are some numbers, okay, but we could do, well, I'll throw some numbers in there. Let's do, okay, so if you notice, we've got Angle A is congruent to angle D. Segment AB over segment DE is going to give me 2 over 4 or 1 half. Segment uh, BC over EF, so left is to right, left is to right, is 3 over 6. And that is 1 half. Because I have First, this piece, that angle A is congruent to angle D, and then the second piece, that segment AB, or the length of AB over the length of DE, has the same exact ratio as the length of BC over the length of EF. That's what this theorem says. Guess what? Now we can prove that we have similar. What? Um, is the, are the numbers on the wrong side? Uh, BC and EF versus AC and DF? No. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not the included. So. 
We just have to change some things. So this is A. This is still DE. This one was good. But this one is going to be oh, both of those. So this guy was good. We've got AC is to DF. Because we meet those two con conditions, then we can conclude that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Okay. Whew. Bunch of tough critics in here. Okay. Next one. We have another theorem. Theorem 7-2. Side, side, side. Similarity. Ugh. Theorem. And this one says, if the sides of two triangles are in proportion, then the triangles are similar. So, notice it doesn't qualify how many, it just says the sides. So the assumption is it's all of the sides, okay? So if all the sides of two triangles are in proportion, then the triangles are similar. Okay, so let's investigate this one. C, D, E, F, and we'll put numbers in, do 2, 3, 4, four six, so if we do corresponding sides, A over B to D over E, we get 3 over 6, which simplifies to 1 half. If we do B over C to E over F, we have 2 is to 4, which simplifies to 1 half. If we have A over C to D over F, we have 4 over 8, which simplifies to 1 half. So what we can conclude, since A over B or AB over DE has the same ratio as BC over EF, has the same ratio as AC over DF, we can say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Okay? All right, so... We're going to go ahead and talk about how do you prove uh, polygons are similar. Uh, and I'm going to give you kind of a suggestion of the path that you take when you're asked to answer a question like that. But I'll give you guys just a minute make sure you're caught up. All right, so um, I may just put a little bit on this one because I have a lot of questions I'm going to ask about one diagram. So I may have to go to a clean screen for that guy. But just... To give you an idea, if you're uh, to prove polygons are congruent or similar, if you notice with both of our um, theorems for today, they talk about sides more than they talk about angles. Okay, so that's going to be our better bet when we're trying to figure out if we have similar polygons is looking at the corresponding sides. So we're going to compare corresponding sides.
So I'm going to give you a suggestion as to how you might want to go about doing this systematically because as soon as you get one ratio and then you get a second ratio, if they don't match, you're done. They're not similar. If you have one ratio and a second ratio match, you're still not done. You have to keep matching. Um, so you have to keep looking. So my suggestion would be to compare longest sides first because it's easy to identify the longest sides. Okay. So that's the first thing I would do. And then I would compare the shortest sides second. Because again, they're easy to identify. And then you would compare uh, remaining sides. Okay, now polygon means it may not just be triangles, it may be other shapes as well. But again, this is kind of the, start with your longest sides, they're easy to identify. Pick your shortest sides, they're easy to identify. And all the other guys kind of fall into place from there. All right, so everybody good with this? So let's put into play this information. So I'm going to give you a shape, and we're going to use it and compare So this is R, T, W, Z right there, and at the very top is S. I'm going to also label two angles, one and two. And our question is, is triangle R, S, T similar to triangle W, Z, T? That's the question we're going to answer. All right, so now I'm going to give you some information in part A. So I'm going to give you some information, and then we're going to answer that question. So this is our ultimate question that we're trying to answer. So for A, what if we know the length of RS is 18, the length of ST is 15, the length of RT is 10, the length of WT is 6, the length of ZT is 9, and the length of WZ is 10.8. Ooh, nice numbers, and then you get that little guy. So what are they talking about with all that information? They're just talking about the sides. So which of our theorems or postulates would we potentially be using to try to prove that these triangles... Yes, yeah, side, side, side. So what we're going to have to do is figure out ratios. Well, here's the idea. We don't really have to figure out what corresponds to what because in the top question, they've set out the correspondence for us. So RS corresponds to WZ. ST corresponds to ZT. RT corresponds to WT. We can get it from the way that the letters are written. So let's go ahead and investigate. So we're going to start with RS over WZ. RS is 18, WZ is 10.8. So if I multiply top and bottom by 100, I get 180 over 108. And then let's see, both of those are divisible by a 4. Let's see if they can go, 8 can go into both of those. 8 goes into that 20, no, 8 won't work, but 4 will work. So I'm going to simplify, and I get uh, 4 goes into 18 4 times, which is 16 with 2 left over, and 4 goes into 25 times. And then uh, 4 goes into 10 twice, which is 8 with 2 left over, and into 28 um, 7 times. Oh, and then I see that they have a 9 in common. So this was a 4, this is a 9. And so that gives me a 5 over a 3. Okay, so that's what we have to work with initially. Okay, the next one shouldn't be so bad because I don't have to contend with the decimals. So let's do uh, ST over ZT. So ST is 15, ZT was 9. They have a 3 in common, 5 to 3. So, so far we have good matches. We need the last one to break the tie. And that would be RT to WT. So RT was 10, and WT was 6. They both are even, I divide out of 2, and I get 5 to 3. 
since all of these are the same ratio, we can say yes. Triangle RST is similar to triangle WZT, and it's by the SSS similarity theorem. Okay, so that's the first one. Second one. What if I tell you that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and I tell you that WZ is to RS as TZ is to TS? Okay, so WZ is the long side to the long side, and TZ is the middle two that are kind of off like this. Can I, so based on what they told me, what of the three choices am I going to try to use to prove that those triangles are similar? SAS, okay. Does this meet the conditions of side, angle, side? Okay, so I'm going to highlight and then I'll erase. So the first is saying this side has the same ratio as these sides. Does that meet SAS? No. Why not? The it's not an included angle, like I was blowing it when I was drawing my picture. So we're going to say here, no, angle 1 and angle 2 are not included angles. So that's how we get no on this one. Okay, let's try our next one. See, what if I tell you, oh, sorry, dang it, Urgh. oh well, you'll have to deal with the blues and greens on my diagram, I'm so sorry. What if I tell you that segment ST is perpendicular segment RW, and the length of ST is equal to 32, the length of SZ is equal to 8, the length of RT is equal to 20, and the length of WT is equal to 15. Okay, so what do you think we might try with this one? S -S -S yeah, why SAS? Aiden? Because the perpendicular is right Yeah, so the reason why they would tell us we have perpendicular lines is to prove that we have angles that would be congruent. So. That, from this statement, we can get that angle, um, let's see, what do we say, RTS, would end up being congruent to angle ZTW, okay, and that would come from the perpendicular lines, form right angles, and right angles measure 90, and two angles that measure 90 have to be equal to each other and therefore congruent, okay, so litany of steps to get there, okay. So then let's go ahead and use our path. Let's talk about of what the picture looks like. They gave us ST and SZ, so ooh. So instead of giving us this guy, let's see if I can erase. Instead of giving us both of those pieces, it gives us this outer piece. So it doesn't tell us ZT, so that's going to be a bit of an issue. But then it gives us RT and it gives us WT, which, by the way, do make our angles included. Okay. So let's start with the little ones because they're going to be easiest to put together. And we're going to do the RST triangle first. So we're going to look at RT versus um, WT. And we've got 20 over 15, which simplifies by a 5 to 4 thirds. Oh, there's three fourths upside down. What is wrong with this book, for crying out loud? <laughs> and then the last one would be ST to uh, ZT. But to get ZT, we would have to do ST minus SZ. So that would give us ST was 32 over 32 minus 8, 
which gives us 32 over what? 24. They have an 8 in common. So our answer would be yes uh, because of SAS uh, similarity theorem. And that's it.